Today, a not scientific person is going to teach you a lesson about filtration placement and how that affects the water flow in your tank. Let's dive in. Hello everyone, this is Benley, and today we're going to do kind of a super basic lesson uh, that came from a question both in some comments and also on my member Discord. Uh, if you're not a member and you become a member, you have the ability at uh, the Pseudomagill level or higher to join the member Discord. It's kind of like the bat phone for Bentley. So if you're interested, consider that. You're going to have to, excuse me, I'm not an artist. So here's our tank, right? Any given tank, it's a glass box. And we're going to have a couple of things that matter here as I grab a few markers. First, we're going to talk about hang on backs and canister filters because we can address them basically the same with how their water flow affects the tank. Let's start with a hang on back just because that's easiest. Okay, so I've quickly drawn this to represent our hang on back. Terrible, I know. But here's our inlet, pretty symbol like an aqua clear, uh, a whisper, any of those, right? Where we have a single inlet tube, we got our hang on back here, then we usually got some kind of ramp that's firing our water into the tank. When you have this arrangement where it sits on the side of the tank, rather than toward the center or in the back, your water flow is gonna go kind of like this, right? You're gonna have water coming in this way, right? It's gonna come in the tube through our inlet. But when it comes out, it's gonna go along the top until it hits the wall. And the wall's gonna direct it back down and it's gonna hit your substrate down here at some point. And then eventually, it's gonna start moving back this way to complete the cycle, right? So why does this matter? When you're sitting side to side, when you're going flow, whether it's left to right, right to left, that doesn't matter. What that causes is the initial water flow will go along here, it creates our surface agitation, that helps our gas exchange, then it hits that glass wall on the opposite side and it's gonna lose some momentum. It's not like it's at the same speed the entire time. But once it hits that wall, it's gotta move somewhere else. You're gonna have that little ripple that comes up, but then the rest of it in general is gonna start flowing downward and following the wall here, the other glass. Then as it gets down here to where your substrate is, it's gonna again bounce and you're gonna have a little bit of churn through here, just like you're gonna have a little churn up there, just like you have churn here at the outlet. But eventually, the suction that's naturally occurring here is going to steadily pull that water this way. And it's not perfect. It's not a perfect boxy circle thing, right? Some of it's gonna come a little up this way and then over, and some of it's gonna just kinda churn over like this. And then eventually it'll make its way up here, but less and less is going to happen up through here than it is down toward the bottom of the flow. And we won't get into the science of this, but just understand that this just has to do with fluid dynamics. <laughs> and I'm sure someone who is far more educated and scientific is going to be like, you are so bad at this, Bentley, and you're correct. But this is just a basic understanding. Take this at a very high level to understand how this matters. But what you're doing is you're creating a big kind of circle in your box of flow, right? What that will do is that detritus, as it gathers along here, will slowly, with the water flow, make its way toward the tank. And some of the stuff might settle up here if you have lower amounts of flow or as flow gets restricted. But this changes based on the water level of your tank. So let's assume that the water is sitting here toward the top, right? and you've got it almost even with your outlet here. That's where this is going to be a perfect world scenario and flow is gonna happen like this. But as your water level drops, right? Let's say it's down here, right? That means this water has to waterfall down some. See what I'm saying? So it comes down like this before it begins its cycle. And what's going to happen is because it's already downsloping, this, instead of going all the way over like this, is going to steadily turn into a tighter and tighter circle. So you're gonna have less flow on this far side of the tank. So if you're negligent about keeping your water level right, people love to give me grief for this all the time, you're steadily gonna 
gather more and more detritus out this way. And some of the detritus that was down here getting pulled in because of this water flow, right? Because you're going to have water that flows like this and water that flows back into the tube. It's going to push some of that detritus down this way. So in the case where you have a hang on back on the side and you notice detritus gathering over here, that usually means your water level is too low or the flow naturally coming out of your system is restricted and it's time to do maintenance on the filter. So this is lesson one. This is a basic hang on back side to side. Let me clear this drawing real fast and we'll talk about the next orientation. Okay, so here's our next orientation. Hang on back on the side again, but think of this as having a skimmer for its inlet. So if a majority of the water flow is going through some sort of surface skimmer, um, this would be like your titles. Uh, you can look at this, especially like the Title 35, where it doesn't have an inlet tube at all, right? A majority of the filtration is up here toward the top as far as the water flow is concerned. This also will uh, lightly apply to those inside the tank skimming filters that you might see at uh, um, a number of companies make them, but like Amazon's one of the most common ones where you're going to see it. I think CJ has a version, um, so does like Top Fin and a few others, but uh, I think Aquatop. Anyway, so when this happens, we've still got our outlet here. And as long as our water level is up toward the top, we're still going to have our water go this way, right? But here's, the, here's where this gets interesting. Because we don't have the suction happening down low. It's up here. This water will still deflect off of the glass over this way, but it's less likely to come all the way down here at full force. It's going to start petering out. More because of that inherent skim, it's going to keep more of the flow like this in a much tighter curve that's going to come back up toward the top. And this is Great when it's at optimal water level because it can keep this area relatively clear. You won't disturb the bottom too much, but it's still enough to move detritus down here slowly over this way. The only difference is you might have detritus kind of pile up over in this area because there's not an ample suction here and it's a lot harder to get up into that skimming box. Uh, I actually see this relatively often in some of the tidal filters and in some cases I don't care about that. But just like before, as this water level starts getting lower, let's say it's down here again, right? It's where there's that waterfall effect. So you've got this happening. And this becomes effectively very similar to before, except for it's even tighter because the water inherently has this movement going on. It's going to still trickle some down here, right? But you're really going to lose it over on this side of the tank, especially way more than you would with like the AquaClear and et cetera styles where it's only the inlet tube that's down here because there's nothing down here creating suction force to bring some of your water flow and detritus over here. So you can get this whole kind of zone really that has very low water movement. Now for certain fish, this might be ideal. However, if we're caring about not letting certain amounts of detritus gather on certain plants, or maybe uh, we have particularly messy fish like Blacostomus, we'll want to pay attention to the amount of detritus that's gathering up down here. Because if we're doing too much, this might just be the wrong filter system for us because it's not mechanically removing enough of that detritus. This is very similar to if you are using a skimming style outlet on a canister filter. So even if you've got a canister that sits down here, right? And you've got your tubes, if the inlet and outlet are on the same side, right? So that you're getting this style of movement. The only difference is you would need to look from like this side of the tank here because you'd have this pattern of movement and not purely this, right? Because instead of a big blade of water coming out of a hang on back, You've got a little extra movement this way too. So it kind of creates this weird cyclone type thing going on. And we'll, we'll explain that a little better in a sec, but it's a similar function where because the inlets are up high as well as the outlets, there's a lot less movement down here. So what you can see happen, and I'm actually seeing this in Fallen Forest, which is right behind me over here, down here in your substrate, 
you can get a lot of detritus buildup, or maybe on your wood and rocks that aren't up higher in the water column. So if you're worried about detritus getting building up, skimming options might not be your best unless you're doing a lot of maintenance like weekly or even twice a week water changes where you're really taking your time to clean out some of that detritus. Let's move on to the next arrangement, which is the kind of more classic where we have to hang on the back here in the center back of the tank. We've got two different views here. So this is our side of the tank with the hang on back affixed to the back of the tank. Again, we'll do the standard style, the more common version, like your aqua clears and all that, where it's just the inlet tube. And then we've got a kind of a front profile, like you would look on straight on a tank and you see the hang on back hanging off the back. So very similar. The only difference with this is this is the front of our tank here, and this is the back of our tank. We're getting that very similar water movement, right? Where it's gonna come out here, it's gonna sweep down and come back toward the inlet, right? Nice circular travel. However, because this is front to back, it's generally usually traveling a shorter distance. So this will create more movement in this circular pattern. So you would think about it like, let's say it was one line before, you're gonna have like the akin of two to three lines depending on the, the particular filters power you have of additional flow because it's traveling a shorter distance. So it just has more kinetic energy, right? It's gonna push harder. It's gonna move this detritus more. But similarly, as your water level falls here and that has to flow downward, you're gonna have a similar problem where it's not gonna do as much work over here. It's gonna have this tighter circle again. But where this gets interesting is that because the placement can matter. So if you place your filter over here, you're not getting a lot of movement this way. If you do it dead center, which is kind of optimal, you are still getting this flow comes like this, right? Which means that over here and over here has a lot less movement. Because what happens if we were to look at this from the front a little bit, as that water comes out and it hits our front glass, it does disperse a little bit before it starts kind of wrapping back around toward the center. And the, the flow that's coming this way, right? It's going boom. But as it comes down, that kinetic force spreads out a little bit out front here, but eventually it sweeps back up and in. So you're gonna have areas through here that have less overall flow. And the way that you can reduce this is to get a wider and wider filter that has a bigger and bigger kind of outlet of water. So like if you put an AquaClear 110 on a 40 gallon breeder, it has a big blade of water, it's going to reduce the stiller or less movement zones. But again, if you let that water level fall, we still have this short fall off instead of having that kinetic energy traveling more this way, you're gonna reduce the amount that it comes out this way as well as to the sides. So that's where you can run into problems where because it's so much more concentrated with the standard like front to back arrangement, you can have bigger pockets of detritus kind of hide on you. However, conversely, because it's traveling a shorter distance, that water has more kinetic force. If you're keeping your water levels good and your maintenance high, you are more likely to move more of the overall detritus towards your filter. Now, granted, this is a hyper scenario in the sense that moving more detritus you're still moving plenty. As long as you keep up with your maintenance, you're gonna be fine. You're likely to see very limited detritus overall in your substrate. This just can move significantly more of it because of the stronger kinetic force. However, when we arrange from the side, like we demonstrated previously, you can more easily spread that force out across the shorter portion of your tank, that front to back distance, so that the water is doing a little bit more thorough work across the entirety of the tank when conditions are optimal. This is the most common arrangement, pretty simple. And as you move stuff, like if you have the filter over here, you're gonna have more still zones over here. And similarly, if you take it far over to this side, 
you'll have more still zones this way and more concentrated flow over here. But in the end, this action here is really what matters the most as far as filtration of the water as a whole and removal of detritus. No matter where you arrange this filter, as long as you have an appropriate size filter for your tank, and an example would be like, I would put something one step up from what it suggests. So if you're looking at a 20 gallon tank, use at least an AquaClear 30, maybe even a 50 if you're going the AquaClear route. If you're doing this on a 40 gallon breeder, maybe look at like the Tidal 75 or an AquaClear 70, et cetera, et cetera. And you can go bigger and dial the flow down, that's okay. But this is the two major differences. Now, the skimming portion is the same. And I'm, I'm not gonna redraw it just to make it simple. So if we're only skimming here, you're getting that shallower water curve. But because, because we're doing the shorter distance, we have much more kinetic energy happening here, right? It's not losing as much of that oomph as it travels more distance. And I know you're like, you scientists out there are like, Bentley, this is the worst thing ever. It's okay, keep it simple, right? Keep it simple, internet dummy. Because <laughs> I'm the internet dummy here. Even with just the skimmer box here, if the flow is coming up, because the kinetic force is stronger in this shorter distance, you're actually gonna pick up a good amount of this detritus down here throughout the entire zone, and it's not gonna stay quite as tight as it would running long ways in a tank. You will still run into some problems as this water level gets lower and lower. So keep your water level up and you'll be okay. Similar here, when I run my titles, as an example, front to back, right? Where they're on the back of the tank, they push forward. In general, I tend to see less detritus buildup than when I run them side to side. However, if I keep everything optimal and I'm on top of my maintenance, I see less overall buildup of detritus if everything is perfect in the side to side. And that's a personal observation. There's no science behind that. But we know that I don't keep everything perfect. So this arrangement, the front to back style movement, right, tends to actually be better if I'm trying to keep a prettier tank. That's the basics. I know I wanted to go into like canisters and stuff, but canisters, <laughs> If I do canisters, it's gonna be like an hour long video. So if you want me to teach you about canisters and later air driven filtration, like sponges and breeder boxes and undergravel filters, all that kind of stuff, please leave a comment down below and we can do a further deep dive into more of a like dummies educational course, which is to say, I'm the dummy here, not you, uh, on how to understand how filter placement affects your tank. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Uh, share it with a friend. Maybe you've got a, a person who's new to the hobby. They're setting up their first fish tank. They need a little help understanding how to do some of this stuff. Send them this little tidbit of info. Maybe it'll help them make a decision about how they want to set their tank up. As always, thank you so much for watching and stay awesome.